The 2022-2023 Premier League season is upon us and for this year's predictions, I'm joined by the legend himself, Buzz14, as we give our thoughts on the upcoming campaign. Will Jesus finish as our top scorer or will Edin Ketia outscore him? Who will be the most improved player and who will win the player of the season? Will Arsenal finally make their return to Champions League football and how will they do it? Will we finish in the top four or will we win the Europa League? All that and more coming up. Babs, how are you, man? Thank you very much, Glenn. I appreciate the invite and I'm looking forward to the video. First question for you, the transfer window is um, just past halfway. How happy have you been with the transfer window so far? I'm uh, pretty happy. Um, a lot has happened. We've improved our first team and our squad to, a, to an extent. Um, and I'm very excited going into the season. Normally, yeah. I'm a bit nervous, yeah. especially last season. Brentford wasn't, we weren't ready for it. This year, though, with yeah. the striker we have now in Jesus, the left back is Inchenko, and the team's fit and available. So that's a good thing as well. I think I'm really excited to see how this first 11 starts against Crystal Palace. And our first four, five, six games are pretty simple on paper. There's no like really, really hard games there, in my opinion. So if we can get a lot of wins there, get some points there, then um, the transfer window would have come off uh, well. And then also we've got some, maybe a couple more signings to, to do as well. So excited for the season and the signings and so far so happy so if we didn't add any more players and you went into the season with five new signings is that enough it depends on what you think it's enough i mean the first 11 mm. i still think if the first 11 was to stay fit i think we'll get top four comfortably but the issue is with the extra games in the Europa League um, and Partey's unavailability sometimes, it's hard to rely upon these players. So we've improved our squad a little bit. Left back, for example, if Tierney's injured, you've got Zinchenko now and vice versa. But in midfield, I think we're still a bit light. So if we can just address the squad depth now, then I think top four, top four is secured. But right now, it's a, very, it's a massive risk, especially with the extra games that we have. Awesome. So that takes us to our first prediction, and that is the signing. So last season, we had um, some really balanced signing, which was hard to predict, like whether it's going to be Tavares with the biggest impact, whether it was going to be Odegaard or Lokonga. This season, I feel like I already know your answer, but let's let's go anyway. Um, so which signing do you think will have the biggest impact, and how big do you think um, is going to make the impact? Yeah, I think the obvious answer is Gabby Jesus, obviously. Um, but I also have to say Mark, uh, mm -hmm. Z Zinchenko is very important signing because last season in away games we'd struggle a lot to control games and that's because there was no player that wanted to you know keep, uh, pick up the ball especially in part of his absence yeah. so now you've got Zinchenko who is a, a very good player in the build-up phase and he's very secure on the ball I think as great as Jesus is going to be in terms of helping us attack better I think defensively and sorry more importantly in the build-up phase helping to con control games I think yeah. Zinchenko could be our most important signing uh, alongside Jesus I have to I have to agree with them, Jesus. Last season, man, our striker scored four goals. That's it's not hard to improve from that, but four goals is very, very minimal. And Aubameyang was here until January. He only scored four goals as well. So Gabriel just we've already seen in this um preseason his connection with Nketiah, his connection with the likes of Odegaard, with Sark, with Martinelli. It seems like he's been here for over a month already, over two months already. He's adapted very well and is used to the Premier League. I think he will definitely help us a lot. So Gabriel Jesus, let us know in the comment section who you think will have the biggest impact. So that takes us to the top scorer. Top scorer last season and the previous season has never really been good at all. Last season, Saka scored um, 11 Premier League goals and had 12 in all competitions, which is um, which is very, very minimal. The previous season, Lacazette um, had less than 20 as well. The last person to score more than 20 goals for us in the season was Aubameyang, and that was back in 2019-2020. So, Baz, who do you think will be our top scorer this season and with how many goals? Again, Jesus stands out straight away because he's a brand new striker and he'll get more chances. Mm -hmm. And one thing that's very underrated yeah. about Jesus is yeah. his movement. He makes a lot of good runs and behind, so that's going to help him score more goals. But I also think Nketiah, uh, with the games that we have in the Europa League mm -hmm. as well, he's a player that likes to score goals. He scored his fifth goal today against Brentford. So he's a player that obviously towards the end of last season picked up form as well. With the extra creativity of Fabio Vieira, alongside Odegaard and Smith Rowe, etc. I think that these two and Jesus and Enketia really could stand out. And I have an inclined feeling that Enketia might score slightly more goals. But of course, it can go either way. Wow. So Nketiah scored 10 goals last season. I was just having a look at it and I was like, wow, 10 goals is actually really good. Um, Smithrow got a few as well. I think like 10. Odegaard had 7. So that brings me to the next question before I go into my top scorer. 
how do you prefer to be? Because um, there's a season where Obama literally scored all our goals. Last season, our players were kind of balanced out, as I said, 11, 10, 9. How do you prefer? Do you prefer Jesus scoring 40 next season? Or do you prefer to be balanced? Jesus gets 10, Saka gets 9, Odegaard gets 8. Honestly, I don't really care how, how it happens as long as Arsenal win games. So if it's Jesus scoring mm-hmm. goals to Arsenal to win games, then that's fine. If it's sharing yeah. the goals, then even better. I think if you look at Man City, uh, the teams that have won the titles in the past couple of years, they don't have a 20-goal season striker. They had players that were like Jesus who score eight, nine goals. Gundogan would score 10 goals to Bruyne. Yeah. So if that's how it worked for them, yeah. um, if that could work for Arsenal, then I'd appreciate that. And I also think we're not quite Liverpool where we have a seller who's going to score at 30, 40 yeah. goals. So I think it will be more shared yeah. that where Jesus will score 15, maybe in Ketia, 14, 15, Saka, likewise. So I think I'd prefer it to be shared, but as, as long as Arsenal win games, I don't really care who scores. Awesome. So I think I'll go for Gabriel Jesus uh, 100%. I do think Nketi is going to have a good season. And I, didn't think, I do think we're going to see both of them on the pitch at the same time a lot this season, whether it's uh, when we're trying to get an equalizer or something, or just both of them starting together, maybe Nketi on the left, Jesus up front, or Jesus on the right, Nketi up front. But I have to go for Jesus, man. We've already seen his quality this preseason. Uh, with Odegaard in behind him, with Fabio Vieira, with Saka delivering all the crosses and stuff, I think he'll really, really shine. And he's not uh, one-dimensional. He's not like a lacquer that will just wait for the ball and... Um, hold up the ball and wait for the wingers to get on the byline to cut it back in. Jesus will score his left foot, his right foot, he'll wait for cuttings. He could score from outside the box, it could be anything. So Gabriel Jesus, I'm going to actually go with him to score 20 goals and 25 in all competitions. How about you? Do you have a specific number? Uh, 20 is a massive number, especially in the Premier League. Um, so mm-hmm. I think it might be closer yeah. to, to 15, 16 in the league and 20 all competitions. Yeah. Uh, but he's poss- it's possible yeah. he can score 20 because he's never started more than 21 league games in the Premier League. So if he starts 30, 35, 38 sure. games, he might score up to 20. And he'll definitely get chances. We've got enough creators in his team and his movement alone will make him enough chances to score goals. So it's possible, but I think 16, 17 is more realistic. Awesome. But for him to score those 16 goals, we have to have playmakers in the team. That takes us to the next topic, and that is which player will have the most assists? Now, last season, surprisingly, Alex Lacazette was number one in all competitions. He had eight assists. Um, I think the previous season, he had someone like Saka. There's a time he had a couple of assists as well. We've never really had a player that we is, is actually looked up as, as the assist maker like Ozil back in the day. You expect him to get 20. This day is a bit more balanced. So for me, I think Martin Odegaard will really shine this season. Uh, but I do expect Saka once again to um, have a lot of assists for us, just like last season with his, his um, combination play, with, um, Jesus with um, the likes of um, Kete, I do think he's going to be really, really little. And Saka is one of those guys who will always start for us games. As long as he's fit, he'll always start. So I can see him getting another 12 assists this season how about you i mean yeah gabriel um sorry saka and martinelli are good ex- not martinelli saka and odegaard are good examples but i do think martinelli yeah. and fabio vieira are two people to keep mm. our eyes on especially martinelli who i think will start more games as the left winger and if you look at him in pre-season in the last game against chelsea i mean that lovely assist to odegaard he looks very sharp and he's yeah. obviously a very good goal scorer but i also think He's got very good vision and good crossing as well. So I think he will get a lot of assists this season. Maybe he might be Arsenal's biggest assist maker um, on the left-hand side, especially as a touchline winger where you've got more time to come inside. And then uh, Fabio Vieira, I think, had yeah. uh, the highest assist per 90 out of any player under 23 last season in Europe. So clearly he's an elite yeah. assister uh, in the Portuguese league. So if he can translate that to the Premier League, like we've seen the past of Bruno Fernandes coming from that league to the Premier League, that potentially, if he starts games, he can be up there as well. But um, I think Odegaard's the obvious one because with the movement of Jesus and Nketiah, he's he likes movement in behind and Odegaard can then play through balls. So I think Martin Odegaard or Martinelli. Um, how many did Martinelli will get? I think he got like six last season. Do you think he can get double figures? Yeah, I mean, if he got six last season and he didn't start the first four, four months at least, um, I think up to 10, 11, yeah. 12 potentially. Most improved player. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a player who had a terrible season last time out. I'm not, not talking about um, the ones who got five red cards or something. It could be, maybe you think they had 10 assists last season, they can get 20 this season. They had five goals last and they can get 15 last, um, this season. Who do you think will be the most improved player? Like last season, I think Jacques was up there. I think Jacques had a better season last season than before. So who do you think will be the most improved player this season? I think if we're going to go off goals, so improvement mm-hmm. from last season, I think Nketiah 
definitely because mm. he scored uh, he scored 10 goals last season but he only started Ten. towards yeah. the end of it so if he starts yeah. most games a season he's got the number 14 shirt and now as well so extra quality yeah. extra pressure as well more uh, chances to play i think he'll be our most improved player um i think ben white is one to watch as well because he is a player that as he progresses more under Arteta, uh, learns more adapts more will only get better as well uh ramsdale potentially if he can uh, re rediscover his form from the first half of last season uh, Sambi, I think if he plays more games, Sambi could be watched. If, if Sambi plays as a number eight, I think he will improve a lot more as well. But if I was to go for one player, I think it'd be Eddie Nketiah. Yeah, Eddie Nketiah. Actually, I'll, I'll actually go for Thomas Partey, um, straight from um, improving in terms of the number of games played. Uh, he only played like 20 yeah, something last and I think he can, he, if he stays fit, he gets to like 40 games that would really, really benefit us. And um, at least score a couple of more goals. I think he has it in him goals is not enough and both of them came from corners not his um crazy shots from outside the box i think at least two of them will go in this um this season hopefully so thomas party for me will be the most improved player and then final one on the players is player of the season last time it was saka i believe the last time as well it was saka so i've been our best player the last three seasons it was the second best player who do you think will be our best player this time round I think it will be Jesus because um, our fans would have seen a striker for the first time in a long time that runs in behind, yeah. that scores goals, that holds the ball up. So just with that shock for the fans alone um, and that pleasant surprise, I think he'll be a fan's favourite and he works hard as well. So because he works hard, he'll be a massive fan's favourite at the Emirates as well. Um, and if he scores the goals to get us into the Champions League, then I think he will be Arsenal's player of the season. Awesome. So those are the player prediction um for me i am going to go with um i'm going to go for gabriel just as well it has to be him man like the goals uh, we, last season we had a terrible um return in terms of goal scored so i think he'll definitely do the job for us and i can see him getting more than 10 assists as well this season so yeah. gabriel jesus for me next up let's go to the team predictions um the premier league table how many goals will score many goals will concede um how we'll do in the cup competitions and all that so Right now, as of now, where do you want us to finish, Babs? Before you get into the predictions, where do you want us to finish this season? Top four, obviously. Do you think that is a minimal? Yeah, top four is definitely minimum. Um, and I think third third place is a possibility. Yeah. I, I really do. Um, second and first mm. depends on how Man City do with the new striker, how Liverpool do with, with Nunes. But third for me is definitely a possibility. Yeah. Spurs have improved. They will get better with Conte, obviously. But I still think I was starting 11. If they are fit and available, is a more balanced team than Spurs have. Um, but they've got a good squad depth now as well with Richarlison. Yeah. Um, but Champions League's the bare minimum. I think Mikel Arteta, with the money he spent, has to make the Champions League. And I think will make the Champions League. Okay, so last season we scored um, 61 goals and considered 48. That was actually an improvement in terms of goals scored. And it was... Um, a it's what we actually went down in terms of our goals considered. We considered way more than we had considered the previous season. So which one do you want to see us improving on first? Which one would you rather see us improving on? Would you like, rather see us scoring more goals or conceding less? I think the defence will improve automatically because we have to take mm -hmm. into account that a lot of the goals we conceded in the first three games of last season, five to City, two to Brentford, three to Chelsea, you know, those games, they, yeah, we didn't have our main defence. So that's a massive amount of goals there and there. We shipped with holding at the back and Mari starting and Kalajnak starting. Uh, and But attacking-wise, yeah. as a fan, that's what I prefer, to see my team score goals. I'd rather see my team win four goals to three than one nil. Um, so I think if we can get at 60 goals up to the 75, 80 mark, which I think will happen, then uh, that's more my priority. But defensively, if we can get that down back to the season before, then I think that's also pretty good. Last season we scored 61, the previous season we scored 55, and the previous season before that we scored 6. Do you think we'll get to that 70 mark? I'm going to go for 70 this time. How about you? I, I want to go up to 80. Um, because if you make it into the Champions mm -hmm. League, these teams score 80 goals. You look at Man City, Liverpool, even Tottenham last year. So I think Arsenal will score more goals. And if you look at Arsenal's games in pre-season, we've scored, I think, 19 goals in, in the four games we've seen play Arsenal. So clearly the goal scoring has improved. And I think last season we made a lot of good chances or we got into good positions, but there was not a striker to make the movement. This season, you're going to have that striker, which obviously allows the likes of Saka and Martinelli more space as well. And I think in general, these players will only get better anyways because they're getting older, more experienced um, and more confident. So I think we will get closer to 80 goals, hopefully at least. 
that that would be great. Like I can't tell it the last time eighty. The best was was I think seventeen, eighteen. Where I scored seventy four. That's a Ago. so that would be so city hits 100 sometimes man that's the kind of levels we are dealing yeah. with what about goals considered last season we, we considered 48 the previous season we had considered 39 so last season we actually considered more but as you say the first few games of the season i mean the likes of colas are still playing we're still trying to play a back five with some random players and then the moment tommy asson and i got injured and um party got injured we started got shipping in goals as well we are doing very well in november december we aren't con- conceding goals we were keeping clean sheets so do you think we'll um concede at least less than 40 goals this season because we've been up like the last five seasons you considered 51 twice under emory considered 49 the last season more than 40 as well do you think you can um, lower that this season no, I think it will get lower. I think another thing that fans might not understand is last season, compared yep. to the season before that, we played a higher line. We tried to play more expansive, mm. more progressive, and that's more risky. So I think this season, yep. as the likes of Ben White and Gabriel get used to playing a high line, the addition of Zinchenko as well and Ramsdale starting the season as a goalkeeper, we will concede less goals. Um, and as I said, those first three games, that's like nine goals there and there that we conceded that maybe if we had our first yeah. team defenders, it might have been closer to maybe one or two. So, um, yeah, I think we'll concede closer to the season before. So maybe the 38 mark. Um, but I want it even lower. I think that we can get it down to 35 if possible, maybe 30. Wow. Because we've got good defenders and a good system. It's just that sometimes we play too high, we get exposed. If Partey can play properly as a number six as well, and just help us control the games and in, in the final third, then I think we'll concede less goals. And then we'll, we always have this um, kind of spells where we go 10 games conceding three goals, and then all of a sudden we face Liverpool and City and ship in eight. So if yeah. we can improve those big games as well, hopefully we can improve. So in terms of goals conceded, I will go for around 40. I think we'll concede 40. That is still a massive improvement um, from um, last season. Next up is points. Last season we picked up 69 the previous season we picked up 61 so it was an improvement in fact the last three seasons we've been improving we had 51 then 61 then 69 so this time i reckon we can get seven we were supposed to we love games that we aren't supposed to lose and then if you throw in the first three games of the season as you mentioned i think we can definitely improve on that i'm going to go with um 72. i think 72 is uh, realistic but i think 75 to 80 again is what i want i want a massive improvement and mm. i don't see why not yeah. because certain games last season with the team that we have now like crystal palace away for example i'm confident we can get three yeah. points there and that's for getting games like mm. brighton at the emirates stadium which we should have won that's three points there and there um and so if we can win those type of games like uh, crystal palace at home as well crystal palace took uh, four points out of six against arsenal if we can make that six for us this season that's again a massive increase and last year 69 points we weren't far off so i think a three point yeah. increase is is a bit too small i think maybe a 75 points bare minimum for me to get champions league football up to 80 uh, if we really excel awesome that definitely makes sense you're definitely very confident for next season i really really hope um they can do that do you think we'll get top four with those 70 plus 70 points do you think that will be enough for top four it should be but that being said Arsenal of the only team in history to get 75 points and not make the Champions League. So it's happened bef- before to us. Um, I-, I think that's why I'm thinking yeah. 80s. We have to target 80 because that will secure it completely. But I think 75 points, nine times out of 10, is, it should be enough. Last year, 70, like, I mean, the year before last, uh, Chelsea had 69 points and they got top four. Mm. So um, it's definitely possible. Yeah. I think 75 should do it, but you never quite know. Bavs with the stats as well. That's why he, he should subscribe to him. The link is in the description. Cup competitions, man. Europa League, we didn't have Europa League last season. Um, the previous season, we reached the semis. The previous season, we reached the last 32. We also are runners up in 2019. How far do you think we can get this season? For me, I really want us to win it, man. That's I actually rather win the Europa League than finish in the top four. I want us to get rid of that. You can't win any European trophies. I really want us to get rid of that. Do you think we can win it this season? Do you think we'll win it? I, I see why not. But also, it's very hard to predict yeah. cup competitions because you don't know which mm. teams will drop down from the champ from yeah. the Champions League. Um, you don't know how yeah. serious a team takes it. Like, let's just say Arsenal are in fourth. Maybe Arteta prioritises yeah. that or the Europa League. Um, it's yeah. something that I would love to win. As you say, win the European trophy would be nice. And if I could prefer any cup competition next season, out of the FA Cup, Carabao Cup, Europa League, I'd prefer the Europa. Um, but it's very hard to predict that. 
because it's very easy for us to say, yeah, we win the Europa League. But last year, for example, Barcelona, they were meant to win it and they got knocked out by Frankfurt, yeah. who won the Europa yeah. League. So, um, yeah, I think we can win it. But I'm not as confident on, on that behalf as I am top four. Okay. okay. So let me just put the question in one. Which one do you think will reach the farthest? The FA Cup, the Carabao Cup or the Europa League? Europa League. Wow, that's interesting. For me, I'm going to go with them. Um, I think we'll do well in the Europa League this season. I just think we'll be focused and we have a better squad. The likes of Smith Rowe, I can see Jesus playing a lot in the competition as well. Jesus, so uh, within Ketia, so you can see us doing very, very well in that competition. So I definitely agree with you. I, I understand um, about. Um, Obviously, uh, it's hard to predict cup competitions. You can just say you're going to win the FA Cup and get eliminated in the first round. So this season, um, last season was different to the previous season because last season we didn't have Europa League, the previous season we had. This season is still even um, way more um, difficult than last season and it's different from last season because we have the World Cup. How much do you think the World Cup will affect um, the teams? Do you think like if Arsenal have, let's say, 15 players going to the World Cup and Tottenham have like five, do you think they'll come back up? Uh, Fresh, do you think since we've already we've been playing games that month we will come back fitter? They won't come back fresher, that's for sure, mm-hmm. because they'll be tired. Yeah. Um, and Qatar is yeah. a very hot country as well, so that's going to be there. Yeah. Obviously, depending on how far some of these teams make it, some can be knocked out in the group stages, for example. Uh, it's going to be weird as well because they won't ever have witnessed it before where you stop a season, you go to the World Cup, then you come back. It's also very hard psychologically, you know, for your brain to comprehend playing Arsenal versus Tottenham and then going to the World Cup to play for Norway, for example, for Odegaard. It's going to be very hard. Yeah. I, actually, yeah, Odegaard's not even going, so that, that helped but Arsenal out. Uh, but Partey, for example, he's a player that struggled with fitness. He's going to the World Cup. How does he go to the World Cup and come back? We're going to have to wait and see. That's why, if I was given an opportunity, I would like to see Arsenal sign a number six profile in this window because I think that's what we need. Mm. Just just in case Partey goes to the World Cup and unfortunately gets injured or gets tired or fatigued, that we have a player that can replace him. So it's definitely going to impact Arsenal. That's why I think Arsenal are going to have to maximise the five subs with the likes of holding yeah. playing more minutes as well in Saliba um, and yeah it's going to be very interesting and as a football fan more football for us is better but for the players it's, it's going to be very hard yeah and this is the time that I actually expect a lot of Arsenal players to go to the World Cup like England especially in Brazil yeah. we have a lot of talent there and then obviously um, the likes of Patrick you've mentioned all of them will be involved um, and lucky for the likes of El Nene would have had even way more players um, going to that World Cup thank you very much for the invitation Glenn Enjoy the video. Uh, don't forget to smash a like here, subscribe as well, and turn on the personal notifications. Awesome. So where can they follow you? I'll put you on the screen. Where can they follow you? You can follow me on uh, my YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. It's Bavs14 on across all platforms. Um, YouTube is more sensible. Arsenal transfer news. Twitter is more shameless. Um, so <laughs> follow that at your own. Um, and Instagram is just posting photos. So um, yeah, thank you. And there we have it. Of course, you might have a different opinion. Maybe you think Martin Odegaard will be our top scorer, or maybe you think Pepe will end up staying and be the most improved player. Let us know in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Hope we have a great season. Come on, you Gunners. Catch up with you guys on the next one.